Better bones by putting your bones under stress. Making your bones stronger, making them like granite. I'm Jack Godfrey and this is Beginner Qigong. In today's class we have part two of our Better Bones series. In the first part we talked about Wolf's Law and how in the late 1800s, early 1900s, Wolf a German scientist determined that if you put bones under stress they get stronger, they get denser, they get harder. And he did a couple experiments to prove this and the, the one that I know most about is turkeys. He put uh, two sets of turkeys, two flocks of turkeys, you know, one in one cage you know, on the ground over here and another flock over here. So the same environment with one, one difference. The turkeys over here were, had a vibrating plate buried underground. So everything else was the same except for this vibrating plate. And the plate was vibrating at a very high speed, you know, going a lot like this, well, even higher. So they had uh, a constant vibration going on while they're eating and nesting and all that sort of stuff that turkeys do. So after a period of time, they tested the bone density to see what was going on with these turkeys. So the turkeys that were on the normal environment, and their bones were the same density as they were when they started. The turkeys that were over here, living on that vibrating plate, again at a very high speed, they found that their bones were much denser. So, putting bones under stress makes them denser, makes them stronger makes them less likely to break. And breaking bones, broken bones, in uh, seniors is one of the uh, most common uh, hospitalization reasons and one of the leading causes of death in seniors as well is falling down and breaking a bone, breaking a hip typically. A hip being actually the hip itself or the top of the thigh. So the uh, there's three aspects that we're going to look at around making your bones stronger. The uh, first one we looked at last time was stances. And we looked at three different stances that would put stress on your bones. Horse stance, bow stance, and a stacking the bone stance. And so we went through those in a fair bit of detail. Today, we're going to be looking at vibration putting vibration into your bones as, as a method of making them denser and stronger. The third one aspect that we're going to look at, which is not today but at another time, is bone tapping, another way to strengthen your bones. So vibration. There was a study done. You know, there's always been all kinds of studies, but there was a study done about uh, tennis players and bone density. So a professional tennis player does a lot of practice for tennis. And they're hitting the ball, they're serving, they're rallying, and the ball is going back and forth, and they're hitting it with their tennis racket. Every time they hit that ball, you know, they go whack. And when the ball and the racket come together, there's a great deal of vibration that goes on in this arm, not so much the other one. So they you're hitting the ball with the racket over and over and over all day long. A professional tennis player does a lot of practice. So they've got to keep their game in the top form. And so they're hitting the ball all the time. So every time they hit the ball, there's a vibration in this arm. Not so much in this one. So what this study did is they looked at hundreds of professional tennis players. And they looked at the arm that they used for the racket and they looked at the arm that they did not. And they measured the bone density in those two arms. And they found that the arm that held the tennis racket and did all the volleying and rallying and serving, it had much higher density than the arm that did not do any of that. And the conclusion was that, once again, Wolf's Law is right. The more you put bones under stress, the denser and stronger the bones will be, the less brittle they will be as well. So tennis players doing a good thing. 
but you got to hit that ball all day long, day after day, to keep that bone density in place. So what we're looking at today is Qigong movements that will put the bones under stress. So we're going to look at three of those. And the first one is, is shaking the nine gates. And then we'll look at King shakes his body. And finally, Buddha palm, a mortar from the sky. And if you find these videos interesting, you can subscribe to them by clicking you know, the, the red bell down below. And also, we do uh, three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday is Intermediate Qigong. Today, Wednesday, is Beginner Qigong. And on Friday, we have Beginner Tai Chi. And on the weekend, we do a live class on Zoom. So you can attend that from wherever you are in the world. It's at 9 a.m. Atlantic time zone. So you'll have to adjust to your time zone to find out when that is. If you'd like to attend that class, send me a personal message on Facebook, or you can send an email to jack.godfrey49 at gmail.com. And I'll add you to the distribution list for that live class on Zoom. And now, let's look at some Qigong movements that will create vibration in the body, increasing bone density. So this is Better Bones, part two, talking about making your bones stronger. And so last time we talked about stances, this time we're going to be talking about vibration, and next time we'll be looking at bone tapping, all different techniques, different methods to increase the density of your bones, making them stronger, less brittle. So today, vibration. And the, ones, the movements we're going to look at are shaking the nine gates, king shakes his body, and Buddha palm, a mortar from the sky. A very interesting name, but we'll get into that towards the end. So shaking the nine gates, no, not shaking the nine gates, shaking, yes, shaking the nine gates. So the first movement we're going to look at is shaking the nine gates. We've got to set our body up, got to get the foundation the way it needs to be in order to do this stuff and get the most benefit without causing harm to our body. So you want to get the feet set up. So the feet are parallel and we want to have the outside of the hips and the outside of feet one above the other. So pick the toes up of one foot and I'm using this one over here. So you lift the toes, you lift the heels so the knee is bent and we're just resting on the ball joint of the foot. Swing the heel around towards the other foot and bring the heel down and it should just about touch the ball joint of that foot. And, now, and you may need to adjust a little bit, perhaps you have a little overlap, perhaps you have a little gap, and that's fine. This is all approximate stuff. So now lift the toes again of this foot, lift the heel so the knee is still bent. Now with the weight on the ball joint of the foot only, pivot the foot back so now the feet are parallel. And so you can have a look down and go, yeah, that looks about right. Now if you find that having your feet parallel bother your knees, bother your hips, you can adjust the feet so that the body is comfortable. The key here is to have the legs coming straight down out of the hips without causing discomfort to the body. And this generally gives us a very stable platform from on which to work with most of the movements that we do in Qigong. So shaking the nine gates. Your hands are wet. Shake the water off your hands. So this is what we're looking to do here. So you're getting, and now you add the shoulders into this as well. And then we add in the hips, the knees, and the ankles. And then we add a twist, and we look over the shoulder. We come back to the front, and we look over the other shoulder. So getting the hands going up and down like this, and getting the legs going up and down. We're putting a stress on the bones as we move the body up and down and from side to side. So the nine gates are the places in the body where the flow of chi tends to get stuck because of 
the stiff joints, inflamed joints, and that sort of thing going on. And so this movement helps to get the chi out to the extremities. So it's inhale here, and exhale as you look over the shoulder. So the nine gates are the elbows, the wrists, and the shoulders. It's one set of three. The next set of three is the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So those joints we get moving as well. And the last set of three are the lower back, you know, around the abdomen, the ribs, and the neck. So you turn, you twist the spine, you turn the hips a little bit to the side, and you turn the ribs, and you turn the head on top of that. So we're getting a twisting action in our spine as well. And then we stop. Should feel some tingling in your hands. Should have a little bit of color in your hands as well. And this is getting the chi out to the extremities. So shaking the nine gates, an easy way to get the chi moving in the body and to put some stress on the bones as well. The next one we're going to look at, the next movement, is King Shakes His Body. And for this one is towards the end of the eight pieces of brocade, also known as three hearts, nine gates. So the eight pieces of brocade, King Shakes His Body. Once again, we have the feet in that normal stance, the ready stance. Outside of the hips, outside of the feet, one above the other. And we warm up our hands. So you want to get some heat into your palms. And you do that by rubbing the palms together, generating some friction, getting some chi to the surface. And now you bring the hands around to your kidneys. So you want to, just below the ribs, so you want to have the wrists just below the ribs and the fingers pointing down towards the hips. So we're coming in here, like so. So the wrists are just below the bottom ribs, and the fingertips are pointing down. So we're pressing against the kidneys here. And now, you lift your feet, you, sorry, you lift your heels, not your feet, you lift your heels up, and you drop three times, landing on the heels. Important points here, two of them for sure. Keep the knees slightly bent. Keep the tongue away from the teeth because you're going to be shaking the entire body. So let's do it once. So you lift up, and we drop three times. And you should feel vibration in the legs, in the torso, all the way up to the top of your head. So, we warm up the hands. You bring the wrists just below the ribs, palm covering the kidneys, fingertips pointing towards the hips. We lift up and we drop straight down on the heels with the knees slightly bent. And what you should feel going on in the body, you should feel you know, the hair moving, the eyes rattling, the surface of the body moving up and down, the muscles moving up and down on the bones. You should heal, feel a vibration from the top of the head all the way down. So King shakes his body. And when you're doing this, you know, you heat the hands up. And this helps us to bring some chi into the kidneys. And we drop three times. And we do this for a nine sets. So that was one set, so three, and this would be another set. So what this is doing is put, obviously putting stress on the bones, because you can feel it all the way up through the body. 
but it's also making the muscles move up and down on the bones and the skin move over the muscles as well. You get all the organs jiggling. And so what this is doing is helping to break up any adhesions in the body, the muscles in the skin, the muscles to themselves, the organs. So we're helping to make sure the body is all loose as well. In addition to putting our bones under stress. So this is King Shakes His Body. Now the last movement we're going to look at today is Buddha Palm Mortar from the Sky. A long name, but a, another very interesting one. And with all good Qigong movements, this one has a couple different names as well. One of them, one of my students gave it after I introduced it the first time. And she saw what we were doing, she went, ah, greet the salesman at the door. So now, now that we've got your curiosity up, we'll have a look at this. I'm going to back up a little bit because it takes a little bit more, it's a little more dynamic than standing still and just dropping on our heels. So what we have here is you want to turn this foot and point it to that side a little bit. This is that eighth of a piece of pie. So remember, we cut a pie in half, in quarters. So half, half again. Then you take this piece here and you cut that in half as well. So that's an eighth of a piece of pie. And that's how much you want to turn this foot. So we have this foot here. And what we're going to do is we're going to be stepping forward. But that's sort of the hand, you know, that's the feet. And so we're, we're coming here. But at the same time, we're adding in our hands to this as well. And this is where the name comes from. Buddha palm. So this is Buddha palm. This is the palm, open palm facing upwards. Elbows bent, but the hand is out here in front. So like so. And then we have the mortar from the sky. This is the mortar. So you make a light fist. And what we're going to do is drop the mortar into the Buddha palm, like so. It's a little easier to see from the side here. So we're here like so. Here's the Buddha palm and the mortar coming down from the sky and landing in the Buddha palm. Of course, we're doing it with a little more velocity than that. So here is, now we're going to add the legs to this as well. So we got the Buddha palm, we got the mortar, and we come up like this. And the Buddha palm comes here, like so, the mortar lands in the palm. At the same time, the leg comes forward and down. So you do this three times here. And then we do the other hand. So, Buddha palm, mortar. And we step forward once more. So we're here, like so. And again, so why is this good for putting vibration on the bones? So what's happening here is I have my Buddha palm here and I have the mortar falling down and landing in the palm. And so you want to land with a bit of vigor as opposed to just going, yeah, whatever. You want to come down and smack them. And so what this is doing is putting stress on the hands all the way up to the elbow and into the shoulder. But you're doing a, a whole lot right in this area and also with the other hand as well. So every time we come together here, we're putting stress on the, the hand, the forearm, the upper arm, and even into the shoulder. So that's good for the upper body. And now, we're doing this, and at the same time as we're landing here, we're stepping forward, and we're landing on our foot. So this is creating vibrations in the leg, in the foot, the ankle, all the way up to the knee, all the way up to the hip. So we're putting stress on the body from above and from below. So Buddha palm, mortar from the sky. Now you can also do this sort of walking across as well. So we're here like this. So Buddha palm, mortar from the sky. The Buddha palm, and here comes the mortar. At the same time, 
we do that step forward and we land like so. So here we go. Then we go like so. And we can go back the other way. So we're here, we're here. Got to watch out for the tree. We step forward and we go again. Buddha palm, mortar from the sky. So here you go, three examples of Qigong movements that can help put stress on the bones to help make them denser. Shaking the nine gates. King shakes his body. And Buddha palm, a mortar from the sky. Or if you prefer, greet the salesman at the door. And now we're going to wrap up today's class with our five directions to help calm the body down, get the breath going nicely as well. So this is yet one more example of putting the bones under stress, but a very gentle one compared to Buddha palm mortar from the sky. So first of all, we need to be in our stacking of the bone stance. So shoulder, ribs, hip, ankle. This knee's bent, this leg is straight, and we check to see if the other leg, everything's working as we expect. And now, we advance, so the hands come up, weights in the toes. We retreat, we reach off to the left side, we look to the left. The hand comes down to the hip. We look to the right, and comes down to the hip. And then we stay in the center. And we come on down. So inhale, you watch the hands come up, weight in the toes. Exhale, the hands come down. Inhale, we go off to the side. Exhale, we come on down. Inhale, off to the other side. Bring the hand down to the hip. And now both hands come up. And we come on down. It's the last cycle. Inhale for a count of four. Exhale, another count of four. Inhale, we watch the hands come up. Exhale, watch the hand come down. Inhale, we come on up. Exhale, we come on down. Inhaling. And exhale. And that's the class for today. So thank you all for coming.